There comes a day when every tea girl YouTuber has to make the is it gay to sleep with a trans woman YouTube video. And this isn't that video actually. It's entirely not. This is actually just how to get a gamer girlfriend or, you know, goth girlfriend or insert your adjective of choice, ethereal girlfriend. Gosh, I like men, but it's also men who make it really hard for me to date them. Gosh, become a woke trans being like the rest of us, Samantha. Why do you keep breaking into my house again? Anyway. Here's the first little tidbit. Don't look at every interaction with a girl with a marriage in mind. In gaming spaces, I've interacted with a lot of men and a lot of men are already thinking of getting married and a number of things with women prior to that interaction with this ethereal GF. And honestly, marriage is a big, big deal. You're putting a lot of pressure on that girl who probably just wants to do their hobby. Women come into gaming spaces because they like games. So maybe start with like, you know, getting to know them, playing games with them. Shocker, the same thing you do with men. Now, this seems like counterintuitive advice at first, but you aren't on the other end of that, that interaction. And girls play video games and just get tons and tons of male attention as long as they are somewhat attractive. This is kind of nice being trans just because I have just lived on both sides of this in gaming spaces. And honestly, it's just very weird how much male attention you end up getting. And it's made me personally seclusive and very selective about the spaces that I actually interact in now. I used to never do that, but now it's a big decision to me. Understanding power imbalances. Dave Chappelle, um, I don't know if he actually said this, but it's attributed to him, said, I got paid $25,000 when I was 17 and was scared to walk around with it in a backpack because I never had something somebody else wanted. I know that they would kill me if they knew what I had in my backpack. Now imagine having a pussy. Let's define a power imbalance. Power imbalances are different factors such as age, gender, and so on that can give one person or group the upper hand in a difficult situation. Many times in life people interact and during those interactions, most of the time someone or some group has power over the other person or group. A teenage boy might have physical power over his high school girlfriend just because he might be physically stronger, but that same boy with a female teacher has very low amounts of power talking with that teacher. Teacher can threaten bad grades, disciplinary action, and even expulsion of that same student. The vast majority of interactions, there is power imbalance. This is a minor point leading on to the next and more important topic. Three, addressing power imbalances. Be proactive. So what do we do now knowing power balances exist in the world? Well, short of having a full communist cat girl revolution come about, I feel what we need to learn, we should learn how to address these things. So a very common power imbalance with men going on dates with women for the first time is that every interaction with a guy that a girl is going into is potentially life-threatening for that woman. Story time. I interacted with a girl on Tinder pre-transition and she just wanted me to come over. Like, just come over and let's just fuck. And I instead had to inform her that giving her address out to strangers on Tinder is a, or any dating app for that matter is very dangerous because you don't know who you're inviting. Catfishes exist and beyond that, most people that are engaging in very abusive behavior are not going to tell you on a dating profile and it might not even come across in messages. People that are abusive can actually be very charming in a number of things prior to the abusive behavior being very obvious. Now, was it okay for me to chew out that girl for it? Maybe but I lost out on an opportunity with sex because I didn't want to take uh, advantage of her naivety. Also, just want to note that this is about my own safety as well. Guys, if you have never met a girl, you don't know who they are or what they look like, going to a random address isn't a safe thing. Like, I, I feel like I shouldn't have to tell that. You shouldn't just go to meet people before you go and be intimate with them. Like, I feel like this is an obvious, obvious thing to do. So this is why, personally, I meet meet people for coffee or, you know, other activities that are in social spaces, uh, public settings. So 
places where there's other people typically, so a coffee house or a ice cream shop. Those are great first choices for first dates. And also during the first meeting of that person, I am dropping every conceivable red flag that this person can find. I'm just dropping like every red flag. So like, I will usually, like even before this, I'm making suicide jokes in the messages. Aw, oh, kill me now. I just make them. I also like, you know, another red flag, I guess, with some people. I watch too much anime, like too much anime for my own fucking good. And I can talk your ear off about a lot of anime. And that's sometimes good with people. And sometimes people don't want to hear it. So I guess I would also try to inform my college and or uh, employment status. Because, you know, if you don't have a job or you're not in school, if you're a neat, that is a red flag yeah okay so this is like actually a another thing if the topic of sex comes up before like on the date or anything like that if the person has never been tested if you ask them if they've been tested and they say no and they've never been tested i hope like this is a bigger thing of safe sex but like guys engage in safe sex like get tested use condoms the big thing during any dating app conversation, I am leaving typically a wide open door for them to leave the interaction. If I come to your house first, it isn't necessarily uh, easy for you to get me to leave, especially if I have bad intentions, but you can leave a coffee shop at any time. Uh, this is just a simple interaction of meeting someone for a date. The big takeaway is that you need to be aware that you might have more social or physical or some kind of power over another person and actively choose not to exploit that. If you do this more, and I put specifically girls here, but people in general will just wanna be around you and they'll wanna interact with you. It's not that hard. If you do this kind of stuff, people just wanna be around you more generally. Four, what makes you interesting to be with? This is really the only dating advice I can really give. The previous stuff is just getting guys to understand power imbalances and knowing not to wield them. But this alone doesn't make you a dateable person. Like that should be base average, to be honest. Like that should just be bare minimum. What makes you a dateable person is more what who you are, what you like doing, how you treat people. This one is more of a question you have to ask yourself, but what makes you a dateable person? Would you date a girl who was exactly like you? I don't know. This is more the idea of what do you do to make yourself a more interesting person or better. This is more of the idea of what do you do to make yourself a more interesting or better person? I can't answer this for you. So this is where a little introspection can go a long way. Conclusion. This video really wasn't about dating, but more about just power imbalances. And if you got annoyed with my points, maybe you need to look in a little. Introspection is key. That's the whole point of this. The big takeaway is you need to know these things exist because just a lot of women can be made to feel very vulnerable and very male dominated spaces. And if you want girls, to do those activities with you because you want your gamer girlfriend, you have to make your environment and around yourself welcoming and inviting because then the girls will actually come and they'll hang out with you. And then you actually have the chance to start a relationship for once. And that's the big takeaway. I hope that's like this video helps people. Hey, thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you actually, you know, thought about it, like this actually isn't much about getting like, you know, a gamer girlfriend or goth waifu or whatever the fuck, any adjective there. If you want to support my content, you know, you can do so here with subscribing or, you know, super subscribing on Patreon or following my Instagram, following my Twitch stream. Anyway, you know, thank you for watching.